So before I get into writing the base, I'm gonna sort of build this into a basic structure. When I am building anything with rappers, vocalists, MCs in mind, I'm usually looking at a structure which is either an eight or 16 bar intro, and then either into an eight bar chorus or straight into a verse, and then basically interchanging between those after that. So for this, in this case, I'm gonna go with an eight bar intro, straight into a 16 bar verse, eight bar chorus, 16 bar verse, eight bar chorus, eight bar outro, which will bring us to roughly a couple of minutes. Um, but that's plenty to give a rapper, MC, something that they can write to. In the session, we might extend or shorten certain parts, but most of that work, again, is something that we're really gonna get into post recording the vocal. So long as I've got something that they can vibe with, that they can write to, that's good enough for me to take to a session or to send to a rapper for them to take to a session. So after maybe days, possibly weeks of tweaking, messing around with the drums, I've got to a position where I've got enough sort of variation in the drums that I've basically got myself a nice simple structure without any bass in it just yet. So as you can see on the screen, there's a really short eight bar intro uh, followed by a 16 bar verse and then an, an area here for what will be like the eight bar sort of chorus, another 16 verse and then depending on what's needed after that. But this is kind of where I want to be at at the time when I'm going to start playing around with the bass, trying to figure out where the bass sits to get that kind of basic structure to a position where we can take that to the studio or I can send it to an MC or a vocalist and they can get a rough idea of what the vibe is. Sometimes you'll do this and it won't even get used, but in the case of taking it to studio or sending it to someone, the next step really is adding the bass and then maybe adding a final, a final few flourishes before we bounce that out to send it or take it to a session. Then the real magic happens once that vocal comes in. That's when you really start tweaking. But at this stage, I'm just looking to get something listenable, something that feels like an instrumental, a beat that I can then send or take to studio. Um, I've got myself a bass sample loaded in. So similarly to how we draw the drums in, I am going to listen to a looped section and I'm just going to try and find the notes. I'm not classically trained, so sometimes this does take a while. Um, and again, I'm going to find those notes and then I'm going to draw them in. So let's have a little play on a little bit of a loop section here. Let's click that, just to keep it nice and simple. I'm going to play that. Make sure I'm on the bass. So again, thinking about like drill particularly, I'm I'm not gonna be writing a crazy arpeggiated bass riff here. It's gonna be quite punchy, quite basic, leaving plenty of space. Rappers don't like to hear anything too complex. If you try and send something that sounds crazy finished, overproduced, it's hard for them to hear where their vocals are gonna sit in most cases. So when I'm trying to like write with like a beat in mind as opposed to an instrumental production, something that maybe is aimed more towards DJ spinning it in a club. That's when structure comes into it a little bit more. At this stage, if I'm thinking of sending beats to a rapper, I don't want to overproduce it, I wanna keep it simple. Still thinking of that drill sound in mind, it's, it's simplifying it even further back because I find once you do send those beats out to rappers, drillers, MCs, they like to sit in those pockets. So if I can create a little bit of space by just leaving plenty of space between the bass a little bit like I did in the kicks. I'm looking to kind of hit the bass exactly where those kicks sat. So I'm thinking like something as simple as that is kind of where I'm gonna go with this. And then obviously we're gonna add in those classic 
808 slides that really give drill its kind of personality. So at this stage, I'm just going to put in some really basic notes, something like that. We're going to draw some of those in and then we get into some of the slides and that's going to really start to feel like we've got a production on our hands, something that we can send, something that an MC or rapper can actually vibe with and resonate with a little bit. I'll play that again. I'm going to get into the, the sort of second eight in this 16 bar verse where there's a little bit more hat, so it just kind of picks up the pace just to try and figure out if there's a play here with the bass. Do I need to make it more complicated? Let's have a quick listen to it. I'm gonna add I'm gonna add that high note on the back end, I think, of that, just to like bring us into the second eight. Let's just add another pattern to keep it simple. Put that down here. there maybe yeah right let's have a quick listen how that sounds I'm gonna add that on the back end of both. I feel like it's almost a little bit too empty. So to give it a little bit more of that drill vibe, I'm gonna put some 808 slides, maybe in the gap, I think on the second eight, just to tease us in, and then maybe add some slides in the chorus area, but maybe drop the beat out. I'm thinking at the moment, because of the eeriness of the beat, that it might even play to not have any drums in the chorus and just kind of leave that as, as is. And then if we get to a session, the rapper, MC, vocalist decides that they do want drums in the chorus or the chorus is something that calls for it. That is something that I might build after the session. So at this stage, I'm probably gonna leave that pretty empty um, and see if we can get some of those drill slides in somehow. going to loop a tiny bit and try and play those slides out a little bit in my head. You do have to draw the slides in though, as you'll see in a moment.
try and draw these slides in. So to draw one of these slides in, you almost need to keep the notes as short as So you draw where they want where you want them to go and start messing around with them. So we start the slide except I'll do the same with this one. Same again here. See how that sounds. And I'm going to play that and see if that sounds how it should. Because it might not when we start playing the beat. quite happy with that. Um, I might add some more slides in as well, something a little bit crazier. And then we can kind of like take, use those a little bit like the drums, you know, we're going to make plenty of patterns, may or may not use them. And this is something else that again, like I'll get into this, get into the project, come through this, add loads more sort of slides and edits and amendments that then when we do get into the session, we can take or leave some of them. Um, just like writing the drums, that can take anything from a couple of hours to a couple of days until you're happy with it. You know, I think you know in your heart of hearts when it feels good, when it feels right. There's no rush in terms of like when something's done, you know. So I'm gonna start messing around with some slides, maybe add some more uh, so that we've got a nice kind of array of different options once we get into that kind of like post-production process when, you know, the more you've got, the better, really. <laughs> 